When you're inside Lightroom Classic, the major power of this program is its masking abilities. Today, I'm gonna to show you some masking secrets that pros use to create better images using masking. Pro masking secrets, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheid, professional photographer, and since I use a Lightroom Classic just about every day, I've developed some processes that I feel can elevate my images. Now, if you ask any professional photographer for tips, most of them will advise you to get a good understanding of masking inside a Lightroom Classic, arguably the most important tool to learn how to use inside a Lightroom Classic is masking. So let's jump into Lightroom Classic and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, we're inside Lightroom Classic and inside here we got an image up. And of course, if you're on my mailing list, you already have received this image. So uh, if you wanna get on my mailing list and get the images in advance of my tutorials, then go ahead and sign up by going to my website, imagelight.com, hit subscribe, and then you can get on my mailing list and I'll send you these images in advance of the tutorial that I release. Usually on every Tuesday, I try to release a video on how to do something. So we have this image up here. This is a raw image shot with my Nikon. I'm gonna make a virtual copy. Shortcut is Command Apostrophe. We'll make a virtual copy. So now we have two images here that we can work on and we'll work on one and we can compare it to the original as well. So let's get into this. Now, first thing you, you might see here is this starburst up here. And this is from the sun. And if you don't know how to do this, the way this is done is generally done in camera. And it has to do with letting a little bit of light peek out around an edge of something, but you need to have your aperture set as small as it'll go. And in this case, you can see over here that we have this set at F16. So that was how we got all the blades to create this, this splash of sparkle. The tinier your aperture is, the, the more starburst you're gonna get. But there's a few things we need to work on. So let's zoom up here and take a look. One of them you see is we got some dust and this becomes very apparent. So we've already learned how to get through this, but let's go through it because this is typical of my workflow. We'll go into the develop module and we're gonna go into the remove tool and we'll scroll down here and we'll go to visualize spots. And in this case, we're gonna just slide this over till we start seeing those spots and we can see them pretty visually up here. Let's get this up to about 100%. Yeah, that's probably a little too much, so let's slide this over to 50%. There, that's pretty good. Now we're just gonna take our remove tool and dot over the things that we want to remove. So we're just gonna click, and of course it'll make a little mask over it, and any of the other little tiny things that we don't want there seeing, those are probably the most offending ones. But let's go ahead and do the rest. And now we'll let Lightroom use its AI and go in and re do that remove. And I, I don't use a lot of AI generally, but I do use it for things like remove because it just makes a smoother transition for the remove of any of things like dust spots or something that you want to remove in, a, in an image. So I find it a pretty quick way and I'm not against AI. I know some of you are really anti AI, but for me, you know, I use it when I need to. But I'm not generally going in and saying, hey, make me a picture of, of a camel that's out on the highway type of thing. I'm not going to do that. All right. So let's go ahead and turn our visualized spots off so we can see our image. And we've corrected some of those things. So let's go on back down here. Now what we're going to do is we want to deal with some of the, the depth here, right? This is a little underexposed. I was exposing for this light of the sun and exposing for this edge of the tree line. So let's go into our basic panel and come over and do some global exposure. So we're going to just slide this up just a little bit. We're going to take our shadows and slide that up a little bit so we can at least see a little more detail in the trees. And then we'll also take the highlights and the highlights we can actually bring down a little bit if we bring them up, we can see that it gets obliterated. And one of the cool things I like to do is I like to be able to look at my clipping. So up here in the histogram, I'll do a video on the histogram because it's a pretty intensive type of process inside of uh, Lightroom Classic. But if we just hit the letter J, we can see the things will light up that are 
that are clipping, right? And that's going to be the sun. And that's okay. We want that to clip. That's not a big deal. That's exactly what we expect. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to do some lightening of this tree. Now let's go ahead and try this. If we went in here and went to masking, so we're just going to get into masking. First thing we're going to do is go to landscape. And what landscape does is it gives you an opportunity to create a mask for all the different things in your photograph. So there's a mask for the sky. We'll click that. There's a mask for the mountains. And then here's a mask for vegetation and vegetation is going to cover all of that stuff down here. So let's go ahead and create three separate masks. Well, you might as well do one for the natural ground too. Let's go ahead and create that. And now all these masks, you can see they're lit up here the way we want it. So what I want to do is I want to go to vegetation and we can see here that this did a pretty decent mask about all the vegetation that was under here, but it's also more than what we want because I'm most interested in this orange tree here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some subtracting. So let's go ahead and subtract and we'll go back and use our brush. And with our brush, we're going to make sure our flow and density is at hundred percent. Our feather, we're going to leave pretty soft. And then of course we can change the size. We can use our little zoom tool on our mouse and change the size. But now what we're going to do is just take off auto mask and just start removing some of this stuff. We don't need this mask, at least not right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our, our tone and our exposure, and let's go ahead and brighten that up just a little bit. So we're going to brighten it up and we're brightening up just the tree as best as we can. And we're going to also take and uh, warm it up just a little bit by dragging over the temperature. Of course, if we went extreme, you could see what we're doing here, but we're just going to just bring it up just a bit because we'll get to this in a little bit. We're going to get a little more detailed into this. So let's go ahead and zoom up again. And I like this, but what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to kind of create work on some of these shadows. So let's see what happens here if we bring the shadows up. So that flattens it out quite a bit. So let's bring it back back to uh, just a little bit below zero. There we go. And now we've masked out pretty much this tree and it seems to do a pretty good job. Now let's go in and let's go to our back to fit. And let's take a look at our sky and let's go ahead and just darken that down a little bit. We'll just darken a little bit. We'll go to our mountains and we'll do a little bit of darkening on that as well just to create that contrast there. So now that we've done all this, these are in vegetation, that's, that's actually gonna be the trees and natural ground is gonna be this foreground. So if we come in here to natural ground, again, we have the same thing. It's collected a whole bunch of other stuff. So all we do is go to subtract, take our brush and paint that away. This is easy because there's no details we're gonna miss, right? This is all, not going to overflow into our foreground. So now we have our foreground here and we can actually lighten that foreground up just a little bit. Maybe take our highlights and move them up just a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we've done what we want to this tree. We can see before and after that's where we started and now we brought it up so we can see how that looks. One of the things I like to do is create a mask brush. So we're going to just hit the letter K and get a new brush mask that we're going to work with. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to go to 100% because we want to zoom this in as best as possible. And we're going to take this brush and we're just going to do a little bit of brushing right here because we want to see what our results are going to be. So we're going to take our exposure and bring our exposure up. And we're going to also do uh, our shadows and bring those down a little bit. Bring our highlights up just a little bit. You see what we're doing here. We're just lightening up this area right here. And if we want to see what that's look, we'll turn it off and on. Now we're going to warm that up quite a bit. And we're going to, I've showed you this before too. This is one of the things I like to do from time to time is we'll go into effects and we'll take our texture and bring our texture down, bring our clarity down. This gives us a little bit softer type of a look. So now we've got this let's go ahead and make this even a little bit warmer we've got this gold brush that we can brush with everything is going to be on this mask right here so let's go ahead and pull back to fit 
and we can take our brush and start brushing over the areas that we see should be highlighted. There we go. So now we're just bringing this gold, soft, warm brush, highlighting just the areas of the trees that would be lit by this sunlight, right? We're not doing anything too extreme. We just want to bring the viewer's attention into this tree and we want to bring it to the edges of the tree where it, the highlights would actually be, would be really blooming through. So that looks pretty good. So now we've got, let's see a before and after. Now we've lit up that tree. We like the way that looks. Now, one of the things that I see here is that um, this is still a little shaded. So let's go ahead and make a new brush. So we hit K and we've got a new brush here and this is going to be inside of these mountains here inside of the mountain we have some uh, pine trees and so we want to lighten those up a little bit so let's go ahead and bring our shadows up so there we've lightened and gotten a little bit of texture and color in there and we can also probably do a little bit of saturation of the color inside on those trees there we go now we can see everything in here. Our foreground isn't done yet. So let's go ahead and do a mask for foreground. So we're gonna create a new mask and we're just gonna hit the linear gradient and let's go ahead and pull that up and let it softly come in here like this. Now we're gonna do a little bit of saturation in there. And we're gonna do a little bit of our exposure. Now I don't wanna necessarily bring attention to it. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit and we'll bring the shadows up just a little bit to give it some warmth and give it a little bit of depth in it rather and then again we're going to bring our temperature up to warm it up quite a bit so we're just warming up this in this mass so you can see our mass that we've done so far we've done the mask of our foreground we've done the mask of the trees turn that off and on you can see we've got our mask of our tree where we did our warm brush and we've got our mask of our sky where we actually darkened that a little bit and so we're pretty we've really come a long ways on this picture and created something that, that looks pretty darn good and we created all these masks and of course we let Lightroom do some of the work by creating the sky mask the mountains mask vegetation those are the masks that Lightroom creates so what we're going to do here is we're going to do one final mask and that's going to be uh, kind of a beam of light so let's go ahead and do that if you're enjoying this kind of content, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon to be notified of my next video release. And keep, keep in mind, you can always reach me via email. My email address is terry at imagelight.com. You're welcome to send me questions or things like that. But I also encourage you to put a comment in. In your comments, is there a mask that you go to all the time? Mine's the brush mask. I go to the brush mask all the time. But is there a mask that you like the best? Some people like the linear gradient. Tell me in the comments what your favorite mask is here in Lightroom Classic. And let's get back into Lightroom and let me show you this last part. Okay, get us a new brush. And we make a little brush. I'll show you here in front of everything. We'll click here. Then we'll come over here and make this brush a lot bigger. Hold that shift key down. And now it makes a graded size of a brush too. So that's what we're gonna do up here. We're gonna hit K, start with a little tiny brush here, right in this corner. And then we're gonna make it bigger and let it gradually come into the back of those trees. We hold the shift key down and now we've made this, this kind of beam of light brush. Now what we're gonna do is come over here to our exposure and watch what happens. If we did this really bright, you'd see this big bright beam of light come through. We don't need to do it quite that bright, but we do wanna back it off just a little bit because we wanna kinda of equalize and the, the light is coming down through the starburst, right? But there's also light coming behind that mountain. That's what's lighting up the tree, right? So we wanna give a little path for it. So in order to do that, we've created this exposure mask and then we're going to also warm that up. And now we're putting a little bit of an amber light to that, a little bit of saturation. So now we've brought this light in here 
And that's a real simple way we can do this. Now, if we've gone a little too far, like in this case, I think we've gone a little too far. We can come down to the beginning of our mask, mask four, which is what this one is labeled right now. And you can rename this if you want. If you want to just double click it, we'll just call this beam light. That way we always know what that mask is. And we can come over here to our amount, right? So if we didn't want that, we wanted less of that, we can turn it this way. If we wanted more of it, we can go this way. So this is a pretty simple way. You got between zero and 200 that you can make this uh, whatever depth you want. And I really encourage you to go back after you've created your masks is go back into the amount slider and double check that that's what you're really looking for. So let's go ahead and we're gonna bring that up probably about to there. We want the light to come through. We want it shining on the back of this tree, but we also wanna make sure that it's the amount that we're looking for. So this was our, our glow mask. If we go there, we can see the amount. We can go back in and do some sliders. That's too much. Eh, that's probably about right. We can also take that same glow mask. If we're on it, we could start brushing again. Let's go ahead and brush the foreground that's here. And we'll come in here and we'll brush the foreground that's here as well. And now we put that little warm glow under all these little light spots that would be coming out from the light that's shining on the other side of that mountain. So not only are we lighting up this tree, we're also lighting up the ground that's behind it. And so this gives us the opportunity to create this image like this. There we go, that's our, that's our final image. And if we go bar before, we can see everything, all the pieces that we had to begin with, and then that's after masking. So it really didn't take that long to create the masks that you need in order to create an outstanding image. So this is obviously a landscape. Down the road, I'll show you how we do masking on wildlife, but this is a pretty good way to start. I urge you to download the image, do some work on it, get the same type of results that I'm getting, and then take that on to your pictures so you'll be able to do your masking. And yes, it's a lot of masking. There's a lot of masks going on, but that's okay. If you're not sure, make another mask. It's not a big deal. All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time.